Uh, this video is just going to briefly discuss uh, real numbers, and you've probably seen a diagram similar to this before. Um, basically, we need to know how to classify numbers. So the way I like to think of this is um, all of these numbers are inside of, of this realm of real numbers, um, and there's two main categories. There's rational and there is irrational. Um, and so inside of rational numbers, you have a lot of subcategories. But in irrational, those things are kind of just out there by themselves. Um, so I'll start with rational, and I'll go all the way to the inside. Um, and the first subcategory, the very smallest subcategory numbers that you can come up with is natural numbers. And those are just simply the numbers that you use when you count. So you start at 1, and you go uh, up by 1 each time until you get to infinity, right? So those, we're just going to keep on um, thinking about those as the numbers that we use when we count. If we take all those numbers, all those natural numbers, and throw in zero, now we are at the whole numbers. <clears throat> and then if we throw in the negatives of all those numbers, then we're at the integers. Um, so keep in mind, each one inside is still uh, inside the next um, oval bigger than that. So integers, we've got all these positive and negative, what I like to call whole numbers. Um, and then we have uh, inside there, those are all rational numbers, but then... We have some rational numbers that don't belong in those subsets. And you want to think of a rational number as any number that can be put into a fraction. And so you could have a proper fraction, like 3 fourths. You could have an improper fraction, like uh, negative 9 halves. Um, and then you could have a decimal that either stops, like this one, 11.23, or a decimal that repeats. Um, those can all be put into fractions. So we call those rational numbers. Okay, and then outside of all that, we have these irrational numbers. And again, those the way you want to think of that is something that cannot be put into a fraction. And so what you're going to see with those kinds of numbers are numbers that have a, a decimal that um, has no pattern to it. It will go on forever. It does not stop. It does not repeat. Um, so we have a, a, a decimal number here. Uh, any square root of a perfect uh, of a non-perfect square. Um, so square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, all of those would be considered irrational numbers. Um, and then things like pi, some constants that we use in math, pi, uh, another one would be e. If you don't know what e is, we will use e in this class. Um, but those are numbers that, again, cannot be put into a fraction. Um, and then the only other thing I want to talk about in this video are some properties of real numbers. And these are properties that you should know. Uh, the commutative property says if I, uh, uh, commutative property of addition says if I add any two numbers together, it does not matter in which order I add them, right? So an example here would be something like 2 plus 3 is the exact same as 3 plus 2. Both of those equal 5, right? That is the commutative property. The associative property says if I'm going to add three numbers together, it doesn't matter which two I add to uh, together first. Um, as long as I add all three of them together, I'm going to get the same thing. So if I do 2 plus 3 and then I add 4, that should be the same as if I do 2 plus the sum of 3 and 4. Right? So here I would have 5 plus 4. And over here I would have 2 plus 7. Both of those will equal 9. And then we have the distributive property that says if we have a uh, product um, of some number times a sum, I can just distribute that number uh, out front, and I can do the products of each one of those and then add those together. So a quick example would be 2 times 3 plus 4. I could rewrite that as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Um, and I should get the same thing. So over here, technically, I could say 2 times 7, which is going to give me 14, whereas over here I would have 6 plus 8, which again would give me 14. So these are all three properties that you should have seen a long time ago. Uh, the commutative property, the associative property, and the distributive property. Um, but those are all the properties of real numbers.